Warcraft 3's campaigns are full of secrets. The game even tells you in the first level of Thrall's prologue to be on the lookout for unexplored areas, as they can contain really good items for your heroes. And of course, tons of these items can be found just by killing the various creeps on the map, destroying their buildings, and breaking open barrels and crates. So if you want to keep your heroes stocked during the campaign, make sure to do a lot of hunting and vandalizing. And of course, just like every Blizzard game, clicking on the characters excessively makes them say some pretty funny lines of dialogue, which themselves could probably be considered easter eggs. Darkness called. But I was on the phone, so I missed him. Yes? Darkness, hey, what's up? The demon hunter left you a message? But this video will be focusing on more behind-the-scenes easter eggs that take more effort to figure out. It's already tempting to destroy crates when you find them, or even just kill anything that's not invulnerable, but there are a lot of secrets in the game that you can easily miss if you just focus on trying to beat each level. And others that can give you an interesting look into Blizzard's developers' minds as they crafted each scenario in the game. So, let's get started. The prologue levels with Thrall rallying the Horde and escaping to Kalimdor don't have any easter eggs that I know of. They seem to just focus on helping the player get the hang of the game and not give them too many secrets to get distracted by. The only real secret can be found using Thrall's far sight ability. At the top of the map are these two scurvy pirates huddled around a treasure chest, which is actually an item called Fat Loot. It's worth 500 gold, and it's flagged internally as the most powerful artifact in the game, but it doesn't do anything at all. It's impossible for Thrall to reach this area, so I guess it was just placed here as an amusing treat for whoever happens to be exploring the map with Thrall's far sight, or using the map reveal cheat code. You wouldn't think the very first level of a campaign would have much in it besides simple areas designed to get you used to Warcraft 3's gameplay and objectives, but the first level of the human campaign has one of the most intriguing easter eggs in the game. Here next to the gates to Stronbrad is a graveyard. At first I thought it was just for looks, or a foreshadowing of the undead fate of the human lands in Arthas. Spoiler alert! But there's much more to it than that. If you wait until midnight, ghosts of the villagers who have died this game will appear. Almost all of the villagers on this map are named, so if you see one die in any particular way... <laughs> you'll see that same villager ominously appear in the graveyard when Witching Hour arrives. The second level, Black Rock and Roll, doesn't have anything too groundbreaking at first glance. Though I do think it is kinda charming how the fire pits light and go out depending on what time of the day it is. You might even think you've explored all you can once you round the entire map. However, there are some valuable rewards hidden if you have a peasant with you to do some tree cutting. Uh, better make that a few peasants. In the south forested area of the map is a Knoll Warden who, when killed, will drop a Wand of Negation. Not really worth the trouble of knocking down 20 or 30 trees, but it's an easter egg. The Murlocs of the northwest corner are also hiding a secret. If you cut down the trees behind their community, you can find a path up to some ogres that will drop some ogre gauntlets of strength plus three. Not too shabby since Arthas is a strength-based hero. In Ravages of the Plague, you begin by watching Jaina chase off some ogres. It's easy to forget about them or think they ran off the map as just a plot device in the cinematic, but you can actually backtrack instead of going to the village and finish them off. The ogre mauler only drops a measly potion of healing, but if you also kill the sheep wandering around their camp, you'll get a nice bracer of agility. Nice misdirection, Blizzard! In the village itself, you can see how the developers had a little bit of fun with the villagers' names. They range from Achilles to Donnell to Marie Antoinette to... Child? Eh, I guess they only named half of them. Anyway, the most interesting villager is this guy, named Gargomel. I'm guessing based on the Smurf villain, for some reason. My lord, if this is about taxes, I can explain. It's easy to just give a slight smile at this amusing dialogue and move on. However, there's also an easter egg built into Gargomel. You can actually force him to hand over his taxes. If you click him 50 times, he'll give you a random amount of gold. If you press him for taxes more by clicking him another 50 times, he'll hand over a potion of healing. That must be all he has because he doesn't give you anything else. It's your choice whether this is enough, though. You are past redemption. 
Sorry, Gargomel. The only two certainties in life are death and taxes, even if you're an NPC. Besides that, there just seems to be this rather annoying easter egg involving these giggly village girls. <laughs> this level doesn't have any easter eggs to find on the map itself unless you count this strange, staggering ghoul named Timmy who comes out of this cage. It's unlikely that this is the same Timmy who got kidnapped by Knowles back in Stronbrad, but whoever he is, you'll see him in a future level, so take note of him. The real secrets in this map are some interesting unused elements in the campaign's map file. They're mainly some curious lines of dialogue from Arthas. No. Jaina! Jaina. I swear by the light. You shall be avenged. These seem to indicate that originally, Jaina was supposed to die in this scenario. In fact, the official strategy guide supports this and doesn't seem to have been changed. It reads, The next day, Jaina and Arthas see acolytes starting to haunt a gold mine on the outskirts of Anderhall. As a camp is being set up nearby, Kel'Thuzad shows up with a group of ghouls and attacks Jaina. Arthas tries to rescue her, but it's too late. Jaina's dead. I can't imagine how this could have fit in with the rest of the storyline, since Jaina has big parts to play later. My only guess is that Jaina's death was temporary and therefore didn't add much to the plot of the scenario. The other lines of dialogue say things like, What the hell are you saying? Who are you anyway? Jaina, you're alive. I'll tell you all about it later. This looks like some kind of gateway. I'll bet Jaina would know how to activate it. No simple cult could have built this. There don't seem to be any lines of dialogue that respond to Arthas asking, Who are you? And Jaina has no lines of dialogue questioning his details that he will explain later. Perhaps Medivh or someone else came and resurrected Jaina. There's also no sign of any gateway on the entire map, so that must have been taken out as well. At any rate, these lines are never used in any of the map's triggers, and Arthas doesn't say anything if Jaina dies. Our hero has fallen! Kel'Thuzad even has an unused line of dialogue hidden away in the game's files called Kel'Thuzad Death. Ah, uh, isn't this ironic? Nothing too much on this level, as it's mostly a survival map not meant to be thoroughly explored. However, if you're brave enough to venture between these undead bases, you can find a cage by some murlocs. If you rescue the captured villager inside it, he'll give you some handy boots of speed. The city of Stratholme is huge and really cool, but there aren't too many secrets to be found in it, even if you look hard. There are a couple of interesting places, however. On the west side of the city is a city zoo with some monsters in it you can slaughter. None of them have any items to give you, except for a rat in one of the cages named Filson. Filson dodges every blow you throw at him, so he's impossible to kill. Or is he? No critter in a Blizzard game, including Filson, can withstand the power of clicking too many times. <laughs> After he explodes, you can see the source of his dodging skills, a handy talisman of evasion. The other point of interest in the city is this obelisk near the center of town where Malganus first appears to introduce himself. I'm guessing something about the shrine reminds Arthas of his father, the king, because if he approaches it, he says this. Father, forgive me for what I must do. I can't really figure out what the significance of this place is. Why couldn't Blizzard have just made a statue of King Terranus doodad for this specific purpose? They do the same kind of thing in future levels, and the mundanity of this obelisk makes it so few players will probably ever hear Arthas say this. Besides these secrets, the map editor shows a bunch of unused regions referring to waygates, all based around the city's fountains, particularly this one near the Fountain of Health. None of the regions have any triggers wired to them, though, meaning they have no purpose in the actual scenario. I think this is kind of a shame. The city's immense size would have been more fun to navigate if there was a waygate system set up. It may have given the game an added element of trying to ambush Malganus or reach certain parts of the city before he does more easily. Perhaps the developers thought it was too easy or unnecessary, but either way, no waygate fountains in Stratholme. Once Arthas gets to Northrend, the story gets, I guess, a more serious vibe to it, the levels get a bit more linear, and the easter eggs pretty much die out. 
The only interesting things I could find are these two sound files attributed to Muradin that don't seem to ever be used. Look, is that the best you can do? I've met gnomes that are tougher than you. Since there aren't really any big bosses around when Muradin is present in these levels, I have no idea who or what he was taunting, and can only imagine what the developers originally had planned. Besides that, there are a few interesting triggers if you're into the map editor at all, but as far as gameplay goes, there's nothing much to do besides follow the storyline to the end. Well, that is all I could find in the human campaign for Reign of Chaos, friends. Thanks a ton for watching. If there's an easter egg you know of that I missed, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Give this video a like and a share if you liked it, and I will see you in the next easter eggs video.